What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're doing a little summertime fishing. Today, we're gonna be doing some dock fishing, some swim baits, some, some worms, some jigs, top water. Let's go see if we can catch some big ones. So summertime fishing, one of my favorite ways to catch them is going and fishing and skipping docks. Out here, we're on uh, Chickamauga in Tennessee. You can see some of these docks are enormous. Lots of pilings, lots of shade. Those should be key in catching fish today. You know, we've done dock fishing videos in the past. I think the last one I did was maybe two years ago. So today I'm gonna talk a little bit of tips and some tricks and actually do some fishing and see if any of these docks behind me hold some fish. Let's go. So summertime dock fishing. See this dock out here? You can see there's probably 30 feet by 20 feet of shaded area. You know, these are a lot bigger than docks that we traditionally fish back home, but all the same info applies. You wanna start with your outside piling. You wanna pay attention to where the shade is. As the sun gets lower in the sky, that shade underneath the dock is gonna pull out from the dock and you can fish the corners of the shade just like you would a piling. You wanna treat it just like cover. Again, these fish don't have eyelids. They like to ambush, so they like to sit in that dark water. So as that shade line moves out from underneath the dock, fish that or treat that as one of your key spots. So on this dock right here, you can see the sun's up high. The shade is directly underneath the dock. So I'm gonna start fishing the outer pilings first. Fish these outer pilings and I'll work my way back. You don't wanna go right up to these docks and skip all the way back there and fish it all the way out. You're gonna pull any of the fish out away from the dock. So work your inside out and then all the way to the back. There's so many good dock skipping or dock fishing baits. Today, you can see down here, this water is really, really muddy. So that's why I went with a little swim bait with some flash on it. This uh, Kitek paired up with a flashy swimmer is awesome. You can rig it weedless and skip it back underneath these docks. Fish in fairly shallow water. It is 1.9 feet deep. under two feet so another great bait would be a jig i got a bunch of baits laid out i got a jig a weightless senko a shaky head a frog a square bill and a top water i start off with a swim bait because it's got that extra flash got the shad spawn going on early in the morning so those fish are keying in on on little shad and bait fish Just gonna let that hit bottom and then start reeling. This time of year, the fish are gonna be fairly aggressive. So you don't have to spend too much time on a dock if you don't want to. You know, if you have a, a good dock you know has fish under it and they don't eat the reaction stuff, that is when you can switch over and fish a, a shaky head or a, a Senko, a jig, something a little bit slower. So as I come out and around this dock, I'll get one underneath this platform and then I'll run one down the side. The fish will sit right on the edge of that shade line and wait to ambush bait fish and such to come by. So these big boathouse docks obviously have a lot of cover. So gotta get really good at uh, 
selecting your casts, dissecting where these fish will be. Got a shade corner over here, we'll hit. Get out of here. The great, time, the great thing about this time of year is you can fish your strengths. If you like skipping a Senko or you like throwing a, a walking bait or skipping a frog, skipping a jig, you can pick however you want to fish. Oh, I just got cracked. Another thing about uh, dock fishing you always, well, anytime you're fishing, try and be as quiet as possible. Stay as far back off the dock as possible, where you can still make your cast effectively. The less noise you make, the better chance of getting bit. So like this dock right here, This one's a little tricky because it's got a, a lift that's dropped down in the little boat slip area. But you can see that hard 90 degree uh, shade line, 90 degree shade line over here. And then there's a big platform in the back left corner. Most of those fish are gonna sit underneath there and ambush. So work this outside line, stay away from that boat lift because there's gonna be boards and wires and cables and all sorts of stuff to get hung up on really hard to uh, to skip up in there unless you keep it real just below the surface but I don't recommend it work those outside corners slide past the uh, boat lift area and then work the outside corners and then the big platform Now again, I have no idea if these docks have fish or not. Never fished them before in my life. But I'm just kind of showing you how I would fish them. I'm going through first with reaction. And if I get a gut feeling or I feel like there should be some fish there, I will slow down and pick up the shaky head or skip the Senko. And really dissect it. Ooh. Keep it shallow up underneath that lift, up above that lift. So when I'm picking out a dock that really stands out, a couple things, a few things that really stand out to me. One, a dock that's all, all the way in the back of a cove, it's the lone dock. Those fish will congregate underneath that. Um, two, if a dock is close to deep water or is on a point next to deep water, you know, say this, this dock right up here broke off to 10, 12, 15, 20 feet, but the base of it, the back of it was, you know, two to four, two to six, something like that, where a fish can pull up out of the deep water and go under, up shallow. Uh, those are key as well. So this guy right here is a complete boat house. What's cool about this dock is you can actually fish it, you know, all four sides if you really wanted to, but you can squeeze up to the side of this one and work it just like you would the front of a dock, but from the side. Outside corner. Outside corner. Another little tip for you too, if you're skipping
little crappie. <laughs> Thanks, dude. What I was gonna say is another tip for skipping docks if you don't wanna, if you're afraid of blowing up your spool, because believe me, it happens to all of us. Um, make a cast, 20 yards or so. Put a piece of electrical tape right here. Put it on your line and then reel it up. That way, if you do backlash or you do blow up your spool, you only, worst case scenario, you only lose 20, you know, 25 yards of, of line. How's it going? Pretty good. Have any luck? Yeah, I mean, I got a real good one this morning. Nice. Like, really great. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, how about you? I haven't um, really fished this area. I've never fished this before, but I just caught a crappie the cast before. Oh, nice. All right, so this guy is fishing a tournament right here. I don't want to go beat up these docks. I'm gonna pull over here in the shade and just kind of talk you through my thought process and uh, maybe jump to some different docks. All right, so like I said, the gentleman right there, right as I caught that crappie, he came around the corner and told me he's fishing a tournament. So he's in a kayak. I can move and go to different places. So I'll go try and find a different spot to do this video, but um, don't want to beat up the docks or fish the same docks that he's fishing. Mine are just fun, fun fish. So. Um, caught a little crappie, it's kind of cool. Did have a few other little bites back there, but um, you know, in this real dirty water with that blade spinning, a lot of times they'll hit that blade first before they actually get the bait. Big fish will get the whole thing, little guys will hit that blade. Um, so kind of went blue through these docks, kind of walked you through the process, how to pick them apart, how to really, you know, kind of speed fish them, if you will. Now, if you're fishing with a shaky head or a Senko or a jig, something a little bit slower, obviously you're gonna slow down and you're gonna fish each of those pilings, like I said, front to back, from the edge of the shade back, all the way through until you get to the very back corner and work all of that. Especially if you know it's a key dock and uh, you've, ha you've had history there or it looks good on the map, close to deep water, last dock in a bay, only dock in a bay, that sort of stuff. Let's go jump over, get out of this wind and see if we can find some different docks. All right, made a little bit of a move to get out of that guy's way. Again, I don't wanna get in his way, fishing the same docks when he's fishing a tournament and I'm fishing for fun. But uh, came to this area over here. Uh, one thing that really stood out to me and I want to, uh, to point out to you guys as well, when you're pulling into a bay and you're choosing which side to fish, obviously look at the docks. If that is the pattern you are on, and you pull into a bay and one side has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven docks, and the other side has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 docks. Depends on how you're gonna fish. It seems like it's an easy answer which side to fish, but if you're fishing a reaction bait and you're gonna be moving very quickly, obviously pick the side with the most docks. You'll be able to cover more docks, more structure, and hopefully get that reaction bite. But if you're throwing a Senko, if you're throwing a jig, if you're throwing something that's a little bit slower and you're really gonna fish those docks methodically, start on that side. Reason being, when you pull up to that dock, there isn't any other structure for 120 yards to the right and 70 yards to the left. So any fish in that area is gonna be up underneath that dock or close to it. So you're gonna to wanna to spend a lot more time picking that dock apart as opposed to pulling up to one of these docks and 20 yards to the left or right, there's another dock. So think about that when you're trying to figure out which side of a bay you wanna fish. Uh, you know, if the docks are equal, then you know, flip a coin, whatever it may be. Look at the sun, the way the sun's gonna be setting. Um, don't flip a coin, I was just kidding. But two different thought processes you're gonna slow and meticulous, you know, really pick those docks apart, fish that side. If you're gonna be moving, covering a lot of water, fish this side. So right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through these docks, fish these with a reaction bait, and I'll come over here and kinda switch to the, the Nico rig or the, or the shaky head, the jig, kinda show you guys how I fish those as well. So the first thing I noticed about these docks, even though they're closer together, they're a lot deeper. I'm sitting in like four and five feet of water 
back there I was in less than two feet so I'm gonna work these bait these baits a little bit slower let them get down to the bottom and kind of swim them close to the bottom and see if we can get bit Nice one. Thanks, dude. All right, so I was gonna jump across and fish these docks, but now we have some company in here. Uh, big boat tubing back and forth, just creating big old wakes and muddying up the water even more. So uh, let's just talk about the baits for a little bit. Again, I explained in the beginning uh, two different real really two different ways to approach these docks, either reaction baits or finesse baits. Quickly fishing, reaction fishing, or slow fishing. And both work, both have their um, times they shine, right? When I came through this dock row, I fished about five or six docks with that underspin and had five or six bites, caught two fish, um, but it allowed me to move very quickly. Now, if I wanted to pick slow down and pick those docks apart. Once I had some history with those docks, once I had some history with those docks, I knew which ones were better than others, which ones held fish. I would spend more time picking them apart with a jig, a shaky head, and a Senko. Again, the differences between the three, a jig, you can get real reactive with it. It's heavier skip that thing up underneath there those of you guys that like skipping jigs you're going to want to go with now this is a shaky head but you're going to go with an arky style head jig something's got a little bit more flat uh, surface so you can kind of skip that bait up underneath those docks just like when you were at the lake or the the river as a kid and you were picking up rocks to skip you wanted the flattest rock and you want to get real low to the real low to the water and that get that trajectory real low and skip that that rock across the surface, a jig, a shaky head is the same thing. So get yourself some uh, Arky style head jigs. Just like every video, I'll link this stuff down below in the video description, but the shaky head, again, same thing. Get yourself, get yourself one with a nice flat head for skipping. Again, the benefit of the shaky head and the jig, it's weighted so you can get it up underneath there falls quickly if you are fishing deeper docks falls quickly a lot of times you'll get that reaction bite on the fall as that bait is falling past them if not now you're on the bottom you got a good bottom contact you're just kind of shaking that worm shaking that jig hopping it and fishing it out the Senko a little different you're gonna skip that down skip that bait down underneath that dock and just let it fall it's gonna slow fall very slowly and a lot of times that's when you're gonna get your bite on that initial fall as that bait is falling you'll just feel a little tick or you'll see your line jump so pay attention on the weightless baits because you're not gonna have that that feel the bait as it's falling it's gonna be falling very slow and that is when you're typically gonna get your bites again it's a lot slower fishing but it's not as intrusive and you can get those finicky fish that are just sending themselves up underneath the dock that don't necessarily want to feed you can get those fish to eat now the three other baits that I had tied on, a square bill, obviously you can't uh, fish this up underneath docks very easily, but along those 90 degree or those shade lines, those ones I showed you, that 90 degree line along the edge of the dock, as that sun goes down, that line moves out. You can fish that square bill quickly, real erratically along that shade line to get the fish to commit. And then two top waters. This is a tackle, this is a walking bait. 
Uh, very good bait. Same type of thing. I'm going to fish that along the edges of the dock, along the uh, the corners of the dock, those main pilings. Can't get the bait really up underneath there, but you can fish around as those docks kind of taper off to the, the landing or the walkway in the back. You can come in the dock at an angle and fish those back corners where the, the walkway uh, meets shoreline. A lot of times those fish in the summertime will be up very, very shallow, the farthest back piling, and that's where you will get your bites. A frog you can skip. Those of you guys that like skipping a frog, you know what you can do underneath uh, laydowns and such. Same thing applies to dock fishing. Skip this bait up underneath the dock, walk it out, and you'll be surprised with what eats a frog. So, a little bit of dock fishing tips for you guys. You know, video went a little bit differently than I planned. Again, didn't want to get in that guy's way as he's fishing this uh, end of row of docks and uh, for that tournament. And uh, so gave him some room and then we got some, some boat traffic in here. But uh, as always, guys, we appreciate you. If you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. If you have uh, any videos you guys want or recommendations, leave those down below in the comment section. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We do three videos a week, sometimes more, strictly teaching to help you guys catch more fish. As always, guys, we appreciate you. Have a good one.